Today we will learn the chapter 10. Chapter 10 is the title is the DNA, the chemical nature of the gene. Chapter 10 is composed of the four subjects. First one is the, the genetic material possesses several key characteristics. Second one, we will learn the structure of DNA and the RNA structure. And also we will learn some the complementary and antifederal nucleate, uh, nucleotide strand uh, that forms a uh, double helix. And also we will learn the special structure in the DNA and the RNA. Or 4,000 years ago, Sakaka people lived in Greenland. This is Greenland. And the man was buried under the snow. After 4,000 years later, scientists found hair turfs under the snow and did DNA sequencing. So this is their paper which was published in the Nature and they did full genome sequencing by using their hair turf and found that the DNA sequence from the hair tufts of the 4,000 years old male it showed that nearly similar to the DNA sequence in the people who lives in the Russia. Uh, the Chukuchik people still lives in the Russia and uh, the, the DNA sequence is nearly similar to the, 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 the DNA sequence uh, from the hair tufts of 4,000 years old male. So it means that the human genome sequence answers anthropological readers. What was leader? It means that 4,000 years ago, there was a direct connection between the Greenland and the Russia. So maybe the people, there was communication the, 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 between the people who lives in the Greenland and the, the people who lives in the, the Russia. So in this slide, I will explain the key characteristics in genetic materials. So the first one is genetic material must contain complex information. So human has the 22 pairs of chromosome and the male has the uh, X, XY and women has XX. In one chromosome, there are tons of the information is it? They contain tons of information, DNA information. So genetic material must contain complex information. And also they must replicate faithfully. And also the genetic materials encode the phenotype. And also must have the capacity to vary. For example, in, uh, during the meiosis, Usually, the crossing over is happens. It can exchange the genetic information. So this is four key characteristics in the genetic materials. So in this slide, I will explain the early studies of DNA. So who found the who discovered the DNA? So actually, the Frederick Michener. So discovers the DNA. So actually the, he collected white blood cell from first. What is first? First is Gordon. After that he raised the cell and isolated the nuclei. And finally he found the substance he called the nuclein. Actually the nuclein was the DNA. And also Cosell Cosell discovers, the, discovers that DNA contains four nitrogenous bases. So DNA contains bases. So adenine, thymine, guanosine, cytosine. And also Shagaf. Shagaf found that the regularity in the base ratio of DNA. So the ratio between adenine and thymine is one to one and the ratio between guanosine and cytosine was also 1 to 1. So in this slide, I will show you the Chagaf's rule again. 
Shagap's rule showed that the regularity in base ratio of DNA. This is table point 10.1 to show that base composition and the ratio of base in the DNA. In East, uh, the, adenine is the, the base composition of adenine is 31.3% and timine is 32.9%. However, the guanine is 18.7% and cytosine is 17.1%. And the ratio between A to timine is 0.95 and G to cytosine is 1.09. So it means that the amount of adenine is equal to the amount of timine and also the amount of guanine is equal to amount of cytosine. So this is the Chagapus rule. So he found the regularity in the base ratio of DNA. So in this slide I will explain the second subject. Second subject is all genetic information is encoded in the structure of DNA or RNA. So this is the Griffiths experiment to show some information of DNA. So, okay. The question was that can an extract from dead bacterial cell genetically transform living cells? Okay. So this is the there are two types of the bacteria. One is a wild type, the other is a mutant type. The wild type is they are smooth, so that's why we call it as S type. So they are virulent. Another type is the, they are rough, the, the space is very rough, and also they are non virulent. When S type of the bacteria are injected into the mice, mouse dies, at that uh, type of the S type of bacteria is recovered from dead mice. How about the R type mouse? When R type mouse were injected into the mouse, mouse still, uh, still alive and um, no bacteria is recovered. <clears throat> so another set of experiment is that People did heat killed the S type of bacteria after that injected into the mice and found that still mouse is alive and no bacteria is recovered. But however, when a mixture of the R type bacteria and or heat killed, heat killed the S type bacteria, they are mixed, they did a mixture and are injected into the mice, the mouse dies. And also uh, from the dead mice, people found that S type bacteria. People found the S type bacteria. So it means that answer was that substance in the heat killed bacteria, substance in the heat killed bacteria transform the bacteria, transform the mutant bacteria into live and virulent bacteria. So this is answer. Okay. So Griffith's experiment, people found that there is transforming substances. And the next question is that what is the chemical nature of transforming substances? So to answer the question, people did experiment. So people used type S bacteria. Type S bacteria is the virulent. Step so that use heat to kill the virulent bacteria. After that, they did homogenize, and after that, they did filter. So this is the uh, S S type bacterial filtrate. After that, they treat sample with enzyme 
one enzyme can destroy the RNA, the other enzyme can destroy the protein, and the final enzyme can destroy the DNA. Okay? After that, so add the treated sample to the culture of type R bacteria. So what is type R bacteria? T type R is they have their, their space is very rough and they are non-virulent. Okay? After that, they found that culture treated with proteas or the RNAs contain the transformed type S bacteria. So they found that uh, transformed type S smooth bacteria. However, the culture treated the DNA does not contain the transformed type S bacteria. They only have type R bacteria. So the result was that DNAs destroy the transforming substances. So it means that the answer is the nature of transforming substance is DNA. So based on this experiment, people found that transforming substance is DNA. So in this slide, I will explain the nature of T2 bacterial phase and their lytic life cycles because that uh, in next slide, I will explain the Hershey Chase experiment. To understand the Hershey Chase experiment, you have to understand the nature of T2 bacteriophage and their lytic life cycle. Okay, so T2 bacteriophage is that T2 is bacteriophage, means that it can infect, impact, this is the T2 bacteriophage, it can impact the, the E. coli. E. coli. So T2 bacteriophage is composed of DNA and protein. DNA is part genome and protein is all part of the bacteriophage is a protein. It's like this, okay? And now we will see the lytic life cycle of T2 bacterial fuzzy. So usually the fuzzy is attached to E. coli and inject their chromosome, their fuzzy chromosome. Apt fuzzy chromosome are inserted into the bacteria. It usually the bacterial chromosome are breakdown and also at that the fuzzy chromosome uh, can be replicated. At that, expression of fuzzy genes produces the fuzzy structural component. For example, they need the cap, uh, capsid and also they, they need the, a lot of a protein coat. So at that, progeny fuzzy particle assembles that Finally, the bacterial cell walls lies and it can release the progeny phases like this. So this is the lytic life cycle of T2 bacterial phase. So important thing is that after they finish the lytic life cycle, bacterial wall lies and after that releasing progeny phases. Okay? So in this slide, I will explain the Hirsch Chase experiment. The question was which part of the fuzzy is DNA or protein serves as genetic materials. To answer the question, they did experiment. So first, they used the T2 bacterial fuzzy. In first group, they infect E. coli grown in the medium containing at 35. So it means that because the surf is the main component of the amino acid, so S35 is taken up in the fuzzy protein. And also fuzzy with S35 infect the unraveled E. coli. Okay? 
Another group is that T2 bacteriophages infect E. coli grown in the medium containing P32. Because P32 is located into the DNA, so P32 taken up in the fuzzy DNA. So fuzzy with a, uh, with a labelled with P32, at that they infect unlabelled E. coli. At that they use the blender. Blender means that they shear off, all of shear off, they disrupt protein coat in the E. coli and also they disrupt protein coat in the bacteriophage. At that separate protein from cells by centrifuge. So I have a question. So which part is the is the is in the part in, in the in the bottom? So in the bottom means the nucle uh, nuclei so because nucleus is very very heavy, so they will be in the located in the pellet. How about the upper location? So protein is the is a is not heavy compared to the 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 uh, the DNA. So protein will be located in the upper region. So okay. So apt centrifugations. F35 is recovered in the fluid containing the virus coat, not in the pellet. So it means that no radioactivity is detected in the pellet, indicating that protein has not been transmitted to the posenophages. How about in these cases? So apt Centrifugations, infected bacteria, forms of pellet, they, they made a pellet containing P32 in the bottom of the tube. It means that prosenophages are radioactive. It means that indicating that DNA has been transmitted to prosenophages. So the result was that Fuzzy with with P32 produces the prosenophages, which are radioactive. So it means that the answer is that DNA carries genetic information in the bacterial fuzzy. Okay, this was the question. This was the answer. So this is concept check one. The question is that if Avery and McCarthy had found that the sample of heat-killed bacteria treated with RNAs and DNAs transformed the bacteria, but samples treated with proteas did not. What conclusion would you have made? So the conclusion will be DNA not. No, protein is the genetic material. The answer will be C. Previously, I explained that DNA is genetic material, but uh, they don't know the DNA structure. But initially, the Rosalind Franklin, uh, she did experiment like this. Okay, I will explain how she did experiment. So, first, crystals of DNAs are placed in the, the X-ray source. At that, crystals of DNAs are bombarded with X-ray. At that, which are diffracted. At that, the, the X-ray are diffracted. The spacing of the atom within the crystal determines the diffraction pattern. Diffraction pattern which appears as a spot on the photographic film. And the diffraction pattern provides the information about the structure of DNA. So Rosalind Franklin, she got lots of the X-ray diffraction image of DNA, but uh, 
she cannot uh, but she cannot uh, uh, she cannot uh, interpret the diffraction patterns very well but she only provides information about the structure of the molecule the finally Watson and Crick developed a three-dimensional structure of DNA based on the X-ray diffraction images. So finally, Watson and Crick discovered that DNA is double-stranded helical structures like this. So this is the DNA structure. So previously, we found that DNA is genetic material. And also, we see the DNA structure. DNA is double helix structure. But the next question is, how about RNA? RNA is genetic material? Can you answer? OK. The question was that what substance, RNA or proteins, carries the genetic material in the TMB. TMB is tobacco mosaic virus. It's composed of the RNA and the proteins. Okay, so usually TMB is impact tobacco plants. So to answer the question, they use the two type of virus, TMB virus. Okay, at that first they degradate both type of TMB to yield the RNA and the code proteins. So after that, they mix RNA of one type with the protein of the others. So RNA of one type and the, code, the protein with the other. So protein with the other. This one is also RNA of one type with with the code protein with the other. So after that, they made hybrid TMB. So they also made the two hybrid TMB. After that, they impact tobacco with hybrid the virus. And after that, uh, the progeny, so the all of progeny in this case in this case is all of progeny show that uh, type A RNA and type A protein. In this case is the all of progeny show that type B RNA and type B proteins. So it means that the type of RNA in the hybrid determines RNA and the protein of the progeny virus. So the result is type of RNA in the hybrid determines the RNA and the protein of the progeny virus. The answer is RNA is also genetic material. Okay? So this is the uh, the uh, this is, this experiment is done by uh, Prankel and the Stinger to show that RNA is also genetic material. In this slide, I will explain the third subject, the DNA double helix structures. The primary structure of DNA is based on deoxyribonucleotides. What is deoxyribo? So actually the ribose, this is the ribose, uh, ribose uh, sugar structure. The ribose sugar is composed of five carbon, carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5. But deoxyribose means that in the, in the second location of carbon, OH is changed to the H. So this is deoxyribose. So deoxyribose nucleotides means that they are composed of three parts. One part is they are composed of sugar, deoxyribose, and also they are composed of base, and also they are composed of phosphate. So base is uh, we can divide it by purine. Purine means that they have two rings, and pyrimidine, they have the one rings. 
So in the purine, the adenine and guanine is the uh, is is it belong to the purine. So they have two ring, two ring, in the pyrimidine and the cytosine and the timine and uracil is belong to the pyrimidine. So this is base. So the oxyribose is in the bottom. In the base is located in the in the arm. Okay, and after that there is a phosphate is located in the uh, fifth location of the carbon. Okay, so. This is recorded as deoxyadenosine 5-monophosphate DAMP and this is recorded as deoxyguanosine 5-monophosphate and this is recorded as deoxytimidine 5-monophosphate DTMP and this is recorded as deoxycytidine 5-monophosphate DCMP. So table 10.2 summarizes the names of DNA base and the nucleotide and nucleoside. So names of DNA bases is the adenines, the symbol is A, guanine, the symbol is G, timine, the symbol is T, and cytosine, the symbol is C. And also deoxyadenosine 5-monophosphate is the this means they record it as DAMP. So adenine is located in the base location. Okay. How about the deoxyguanosine 5-monophosphate? This is the DGMP. So guanine is located in the base location. And also DTMP is the timine is located in the base location and also DCMP and cytosine is located in the, the base location. And also, we also call it as a nucleoside. Nucleoside, they don't have a phosphate. Instead of a phosphate, they have the OH. So OH, OH, OH. So in this case, it's nucleoside symbol is DA or DG or DT or DC. It's like this. Previously, we see the primary structure of DNA. Now we will see the secondary structure of DNAs. First, the backbone formed. This is backbone of DNA. Backbone formed through phosphodiester bond. So this is the phosphodiester bond. So phosphodiester linkages connect uh, the five prime phosphate group and the three prime OH group of adjoining nucleotides. So, okay, let's see again. So this is the nucleotide. So the carbon is first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So because phosphate is uh, attached to PIPS location of the carbon, so we call it as a 5' phosphate group. And also, the joining nucleotide, they have the OH in the 3' carbon, so we call it as a uh, 3' OH. So phosphodiester linkage is happen between these two groups except that they made the phosphodiester bond. So phosphodiester linkage connects both of them is like this. So backbone is made like this and backbone is make, made like this. After that, hydrogen bonding is happened between the, the base. Okay, So hydrogen bonding and base pairing is happened. Between the adenine and timine, there is a two hydrogen bonding and between guan, uh, guanosine and cytosine, there is uh, three hydrogen bonding is happens. And after that, so this is the second TA pairs have two hydrogen bond and the CG or GC pairs have three hydrogen bond. So after that, strands, each strand run in opposite direction. 
So this one is the, uh, this strand is a five prime is located here and they go to the three prime. Okay, the other strand is start from the five prime and also go to the three prime location. So this is anti-federal DNA strand is happens. So okay, let's start again. So backbone is formed through post diester bonding. Yep, that hydrogen bonding happen and base pairs is happens like this. And also each strand is anti parallel So five prime to three prime and five prime to three prime directions. So the antifederal nature of DNA is referred to what is the antifederal nature of DNA? The answer is the D, opposite direction of the two strands of the nucleotide. So the answer is D. I will explain some detailed information of the secondary structure of DNA. So this is the secondary structure of DNA. So this is the, actually the B-DNA. So B-DNA means that three-dimensional structure identified by Watson and Crick. So this is the B-DNA. So one strand is start from 5' prime to 3' prime, and the other strand is start from the antifederally 5' prime to 3' prime. And also the B-DNA strand is the right-handed structure is like this, right-handed structure. And also, uh, the distance between the adjacent base pair, adjacent base pair is 0.34 nanometer. And each turn, each turn, each turn is composed of 10 base pairs, 10 base pairs. It means that per turn, the distance between per, per turn is the 3.4 nanometer is like this. Okay? This is the B DNA. How about the, how about the another DNA? Okay. There are different secondary structure is also there. One is A DNA and the other is Z DNA. So A DNA, this is A DNA. A DNA is also right-handed. Right-handed. So this is also A DNA. A DNA is also right-handed. But base pairs, this is base pair. So base pairs are not perpendicular to the to the helix axis as in B DNA. In the B DNA, base pairs are perpendicular. They are perpendicular to the helix axis. But in the A DNA, base pairs are not perpendicular to the helix axis as in B DNA. And also there is difference between the A DNA and B DNA. For example, uh, the distance between the adjacent base pairs is 0.26 and also uh, 11 base pairs per turn it means that per turn, is, the distance between per turn is 2.8 nanometer, nanometer. How about BDNA? BDNA was 3.4 nanometer, okay? So this is the ADNA, so the ADNA and BDNA. So most of the DNA form is the AD, B, B form, the BDNAs. But about 2 or 3% is A prom, A DNA. How about Z DNA? So this is Z DNA. So Z DNA is the left handed helix, left handed helix. So the, the distance between the adjacent base pair is the 0.37 nanometer between the adjacent base pairs and also 12 base pairs per turn. So it means that the distance between each turn 
is 4.44 nanometer photons. So usually the B prom, if the this is B prom B DNA, if the B DNA is exposed to the carcinogen or Z DNA binding proteins, so B DNA is changed to Z DNA. So sometimes B DNA is changed to Z DNA when the DNA is exposed to carcinogen or when DNA is bound, bound by the ZDNA binding proteins. So now we see the different secondary structure of DNA, so ADNA and ZDNA. So in this slide, I will explain the, the pathways of information transfer within the cell. There are two pathways. One is the major information pathway, the other is a special information pathway. It's like this, okay? Okay, let's start from the major information pathway. So major information pathway is composed of the DNA replication and transcription and translation. Okay? So during the DNA replication, so information is transferred from one DNA molecule to another. How about the transcription? During the transcription, information is transferred from DNA molecule to RNAs. Except that this is mRNA. How about the translation? So information is transferred from the RNA to proteins through a genetic code. Okay, so the mRNA can be translated into protein. How about the special information pathway? So in some viruses, the RNA can be reverse transcripted after that RNA can become to DNA. So which virus is RNA virus? So RNA virus is HIV or influenza or COVID-19. So sometimes RNA in, in some virus in some virus, information is transferred from RNA to DNA. After that, DNA can be replicated, and sometimes DNA can be transcribed, and RNA can be translated. Or in some viruses, the DNA replication, uh, RNA replication, is, can be happens. So. Uh, RNA can be replicated, so it can make the another RNA like this. Okay, but this is very rare situation. So in this slide, I will explain some special structures in DNA and RNAs. The very famous special structure which can be seen in DNA and RNA is helping structures. The so helping structure is like this. Okay. So usually the sequence on the nucleotides on the same strands are inverted complement. Okay, in these cases, okay, so TGC G A is complement with A C G C T is like this. So hydrogen bonding is 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 found in the, between A and T and G and C G and C G and C A and C. T. So, so it means that the helping structure is formed. Helping structure is composed of stem and the loop. Okay. Another special structure is a stem structure. Complementary sequences are contiguous, 연속적인. Okay. So in this case is okay here, the complementary sequence. C Z C A A T. The complementary sequence is that uh, C C G T T A. So complementary sequence are contiguous except for G. In this case, is the only stem structure can be happen. There is no loop structure. So in this case, is we call it as a stem structure. So. Stem structure is helping, but only have a stem, 
but no loop. Okay, so this is recorded as a stem structure. How about the complex secondary structure? So usually the RNA molecules contains numbers helpings like this. They have contains numbers helpings. So it means that allowing them to fold up to complex structure is like this. So usually the, in the case of the complex secondary structure, usually it happens in the RNA. So RNA contains numbers of their helpings, so allowing them to fold up to the complex secondary structure is like this, okay? So this is the special structure which can be seen in the DNA and RNAs. A and B is which we can see in the RNA and DNA, both of them, but in, in the case of a complex secondary structure, we usually see in the RNA. So in this slide, I will explain another special structure which can be seen in the DNA. The structure is HDNA. So HDNA is three-stranded. So usually DNA is double-stranded like this, but sometimes HDNA happens. So in this region, it's three-stranded. So triplex, we call it a triplex or triple DNAs. So usually the HDNA is formed when DNA is on wings. So this DNA is on wings and one strand is pairs with double-stranded DNA from another part of the molecules. So this is the uh, HDNA, triple, tri triple DNAs. So if we magnify this region, so usually the open occurs in the long sequence of the only purine or only pyrimidine. So this is the uh, this is the uh, guanosine, 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 adenine, adenine. In this case, this is nearly only spurine. How about the other strand is the cytosine, cytosine, timine, timine, so only pyrimidines. So H DNA is occurs in the long sequence of the only purine or only pyrimidines. So this three-stranded structure is common in mammalian genome. So if there is the HDNA, it induces genetic instability. So usually the HDNA is commonly see, seen in the cancer. Cancer actually in cancer. Okay, cancer patients show that several cancer patients show that HDNA, so HDNA induced genetic instability. Oh, DNA methylation is also special structure which can be seen in the DNA. Okay, what is DNA methylation? So DNA methylation is means that methyl group is added to nucleotide bases. In this case, is the, this is cytosine, so methyl group is added into the cytosine, after that it becomes 5-methyl cytosine. Okay, so usually in eukaryote, methyl group is only added into the cytosine, but in some bacteria, methyl group is also can be added into the adenine, but in eukaryote, most of cases, methyl, all of the cases, methyl group is only added to, to the, into the cytosine. So if the DNA methylation is happens, it, all, it is also related to gene expression in eukaryote. For example, this is a gene structure. So usually the DNA methylation is usually happen in the promoter region. So if the DNA methylation is happen in the promoter region, it means that the transcription factor cannot bind to these regions. So it can induce gene silencing. If the promoter region is unmethylated, 
usually the transcription factor can easily bind to the, this the promote region after that the transcription is actively transcribed. And also DNA maturation is also affect three-dimensional structure of DNA. For in this case, if the, this is unmetallated region, so this is the, uh, uh, and usually the, if the, there is an unmetallated region is located here, so they, are, they make the very open chromatin, but the, if the methylation happens here, so usually they, can, they made the three-dimensional structure of DNA, so in this case, is the, they can make the very packed, packed chromatin structures like this. So in this case, is also uh, gene expression is also transcription is also repressed. So this is the DNA methylation, which can be seen in the DNA structure. So the basic is methyl group is added to nucleotide bases and also it is highly related to gene expression. So today we learned chapter 10, uh, DNA. DNA was the chemical nature of the genes. So we covered the four subject is like this, okay? Today we finished the class, okay? Thank you.